let's get started. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Danny Katz, and I'm the executive director of COPER, the Colorado Public Interest Research Group. We are here today as part of a coalition effort, and I will go through those different organizations in just a second. What we're here today to talk about is multimodal Colorado. We're gonna talk about what multimodal means. We're gonna throw a couple of data points at you so you understand why all these different organizations care so much and think this is such a critical moment for us to be investing big in multimodal infrastructure and services. But most importantly, we're gonna turn the mic over to a set of folks around the state of Colorado who can put into their own words why multimodal transportation is so critical. Uh, I'm gonna put into the chat here for everyone um, the link to the larger document that has uh, over 60 stories from around the state, from Coloradans who are talking about what multimodal means to them, why this is so important, and what are the sorts of investments that need to be made that would allow more people to be able to ride the bus or the train, get on their bike, uh, get out with their feet and roll through our streets safely and in a way that would promote more people being able to live that multimodal lifestyle. So let me share my screen very quickly to just walk through the organizations that came together to make this happen and a couple of data points. This slide deck is available on that link that I just sent you. So a couple of data points. Um, first off, uh, I wanna thank all the organizations that came together to help gather these stories over the last two weeks. Uh, you can see the organizations listed on here, all advocates for a safer, cleaner, more equitable and accessible transportation system. What is multimodal? This is one of the most important pieces of what we're trying to do today. Multimodal is getting around the state with different modes, whether it's riding transit, whether it's getting on a bicycle, whether you're in a wheelchair or pushing a stroller, walking with your family or getting on a bicycle. Multimodal comes in so many different shapes and sizes all across the state of Colorado. It's important. This is important in a variety of different ways, whether we're trying to tackle climate change, reduce pollution, improve the safety of our streets, ensure that there are more accessible options for everyone, reduce transportation costs, improve our health, promote communities, or just connect more people to the places that they need to and want to go. There are a lot of multimodal needs. This list is by no means the full list, but this just gives you an example of some of the things we could be investing in from bus rapid transit, which is fast, frequent, and reliable transit service, <clears throat> excuse me, which is uh, bus rapid transit, which is fast, frequent, and reliable transit service. That includes new investments that can build out bus rapid transit lines or investing in some of the places that already have launched or are considering launching this. There are statewide transit options like busting and outrider and shuttles along I-70 that can take us to some of those recreational areas that we go to in the winter and actually even more so in the summer times and things like front range rail. It's also programs like the safer main streets and revitalizing main streets programs that just in the first year has, has committed, uh, has, has invested $59 million in 30 projects. Uh, many of those projects are safety projects focused on pedestrians, bikes, transit access, you know, if we invested another 50 million a year, that could cover hundreds more projects all across the state. And then, of course, there's all the local transit that is so important and really the backbone of the transit system in our state. We already spend hundreds of millions on that, and there's a lot more investments we could do there. High frequency transit is a, a solution to uh, congestion. And here are some examples. Again, this slide deck will be available for you. Uh, after the call, um, and it's in that link that I sent. But there are places where investing in, in transit uh, is a solution and something that is helping people get out of their cars and complete the trips uh, without adding more vehicles to our already congested roads. And here's an example from Transit Center of if you expand service, one of the core things we talk about, transit operating, actually putting money and dollars into allowing more buses or more trains to be running along our core corridors um, and expanding it into newer areas, a 40% increase just in the current RTD service can increase the amount of jobs available for one person in one part of Denver um, uh, uh, nearly four times. And so this is just one, again, example of how increasing transit can increase options for people. Second to last slide is just highlighting that here in Colorado, we do not put 
a lot of state dollars into transit. In fact, if you look at the national average, we are well below it. When you look at transit operating costs, we put in um, uh, less than 1% of the uh, transit operating in Colorado is funded through the state. The national average is 23%. In terms of capital costs, uh, a little bit higher, 2.6%, but still far below the national average. And lastly, multimodal is really critical for many of the goals we already have. These are goals that um, our state already has from greenhouse gas pollution, local air pollution, safety, increasing access, multimodal transportation and investing in multimodal transportation is going to be critical. These slides are available and I want to thank uh, Matt Fromer with the Southwest Energy Efficiency Project for putting a lot of effort into building the, the backbone of that slide deck. And we can answer and he'll be available to answer questions in just a minute. So again, that's just a grounding of the why, why this is so important, why we believe that this, that any transportation funding bill, either on the state or national level, needs to be focused and putting a lot of money and prioritizing multimodal transportation, the transit, the walking, the rolling, and the biking, that is so important in so many different ways. But we really want to spend most of our time today letting you hear from the people who use these different systems or want to use these different systems. And I think you'll see a couple of themes come out uh, throughout this, which is that there are a lot of people in the state of Colorado who, who would hop on a bike, who, who would do more walking, who would be more comfortable or even more accessible to be able to roll down the street if there was better infrastructure. Safety is a very big problem and something that's prohibiting a lot of people from diving in. And in terms of transit, there are a lot more people who would be riding our buses, riding our rails, but the, the transit is just not um, fulfilling the need right now. There's not enough service. It's not taking people to where they need to go in a reliable fashion and an affordable fashion. And so that is a, a, a all important themes that you'll see come out as we, as we tell these stories. I will attempt to highlight each person who is going to speak today. Our first person who we have speaking is Chris, and I'll just facilitate by asking those couple of questions. So Chris, if you would take yourself off mute and take yourself off camera, let me put the spotlight on you. All right, Chris, if you just start with your name and uh, where you live and currently kind of where do you go in your daily or weekly life? Where do you get around to? Yeah, my name is Chris Bentley. I live in Louisville and I sell commercial realist um, solar to um, developers and I travel all over the front range. Great. So why is multimodal transportation important to you? Four years ago, I had three strokes that left me unable to walk or talk or drive anymore. And as I was recovering a little bit, I um, was able to only get around by having my daughter come and pick me up. Then I progressed to being able to use Ubers but then I got involved in a program called Mobility for All, which taught me how to use the bus and how to use the different apps for buying your tickets and seeing what time the buses come. And so I've been using that exclusively for almost a year and a half now. And I have an electric scooter so I can take my electric scooter right onto the bus and those buses have that drop down thing that allows me to ride right on. They lift up the two side seats so that I can get turned around and then away I go and I can now use the Google Maps app and find my way around Denver front range anywhere I want to go. And it's simple and easy. I sold my car. I'll never have another one. And so I'm really happy with the multimodal stuff. What, what could be done to help make it even better for you? What improvements would, would, would help uh, more service or better, better directional routes or faster times? What, what would be more helpful? I think I got the routes down pretty well and the scheduling stuff pretty good. but. I think the biggest thing I'd like to see is the buses electrified. Absolutely. 
Uh, would it help to have more service, uh, more frequent service? Does it, uh, is it as reliable as you would want? Um, in my case, I'm pretty flexible with being able to go ahead of time so I can get somewhere early. So I think that the schedule could, you know, it's changed because of COVID. So I don't really know how it's going to shake out when COVID's over. But the um, more frequent, the better, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We're going to get through a few more, and then there'll be opportunities for people to ask you questions. So I'm going to remove the spotlight for you. Uh, Amanda, if you're up next. Um, if we can get you here. Thank you. Let me spotlight you. Great. So if you'd also start, so name, where you live, and generally where you go in a, a day or a week. Sure. My name is Amanda Roberts, and I'm a mom, and I'm also, I also work from home. I live in South Central Denver, and I travel to Southwest Denver for school drop-offs drop -offs and pickups twice a day. Um, I do work from home. I don't need to use a car to get to access work. So, um, yeah. So why is multimodal important to you, and what does it mean to you? What, what do you think about? So I'm super passionate about this. A multimodal means sidewalks and safe traffic speeds. Um, both of these make walking to the park with young kids or to the closest light rail station possible for me. Multimodal also means nice transit shelters and buffers from speeding traffic for people using the bus in my community. So it's not just about me, it's about my community. And I really feel like as well as reliable, timely bus service that would really help um, folks who are using the bus. Um, I actually live on a transit corridor. Gotcha. For so you, you talked a little bit about this, but I guess what are some of the frustrations? What are the things that might hold you back from walking or biking or taking a bus in your in, in your community right now? Yeah, let me talk about that. The current system from my perspective really prioritizes cars to the extreme. For example, where I live, the street has just has too many car lanes and it's in the high injury network. So that means people die on the street. That's frightening. Um, so kids here in cars end up on our front lawns when they get in crashes, they end up on our sidewalks. Kids here can't play in this, can't play in the front yard. Not, not, we can't even talk about riding a bike in the street. Um, the bus rail system is really good for some trips, such as like, you know, weekend heading to the Avs game. It's super fun downtown, but really outside of that, it's not useful for me, um, you know, for anything else that I do. And buses in particular for me are just not frequent enough. Like to get to a park, it would be like an hour, 15 minutes. Like that's not, <laughs> like it's quicker to drive is what I'm trying to say. So if, we're talking about more funding for multimodal transportation. What would be the things we should be investing in? What's important to make sure the multimodal system's working better for you? So what I need specifically is better sidewalks, much slower, tra safer traffic speeds in the city across all street types, and a better, more reliable city bus system that connects amenities to connects the amenities, amenities for families, such as parks, museums, that sort of thing, schools maybe, that'd be great. I personally also need a safer, more humane place for my daughter to ride her bike, other than the alley where we have trash, glass, and garbage pickup takes place. Um, and I really need these changes to be implemented across the street system. So including main streets, including residential arterials where I live and where other folks live. And because these are in the high injury network, and so not just isolated to the nice, quiet neighborhood streets, like we all deserve to live and move through a safe city. Great, thank you. Um, all right, we'll stay on the line here. We'll have a chance to ask questions. Um, let's get Carly in here. Um, let me remove the spotlight. Um, and Carly, are you out there? Here we go. So let's get a perspective Hello. outside and let me first spotlight you. Great, Carly, if you'll just say your name and uh, where you live and, and kind of where you travel on a daily or weekly basis. Yeah, thanks, Danny. Um, so my name is Carly Bolliger, and for the past year, I have lived and worked in Carbondale, Colorado, and before that, I was in Denver. Great. So why is multimodal important to you? Why, why is this, uh, why is biking, walking, taking transit, why, why is that important? Yeah, so I spend most of my work week, or full week, uh, on the computer, as we all know, and I love Colorado because of all the amazing hiking. I love going backpacking and camping. I just bought a raft, so I'm super pumped about that. And 
I realize that how I engage in those activities now is going to impact the future of those activities. So my car is by far my biggest carbon footprint and it's also very expensive. So I really look at it as living in the future without a car. And that is like the goal and what I want multimodal to mean. So what's holding you back right now? Why wouldn't you be able to have a future without a car right now up in, in, in Carbondale? Um, so the multimodal system in Carbondale is actually really good. Um, this year with COVID, I was very hesitant to take the public buses because you know of health concerns. Uh, so next year, I'm really looking forward to taking the buses to ski resorts. I think that's incredible and even to the Aspen Airport. Um, I think it would be great if that was expanded, um, but also having lived in Denver, I know the contrast. So for example, in Carbondale, I bike everywhere. I walk a lot of places. Um, and even though it might take me longer to bike somewhere rather than drive in Carbondale, I choose to do that because it's so safe and easy. Whereas in Denver, I would never bike, even though it might take less time than driving my car. Um, so I, I'm really hopeful for Denver that they can get better and safer bike lanes um, and then in Carbondale just to improve what they already have and really invest in it. And to speak to that safety piece again, you're, you're saying you feel safer in Carbondale. What is it about feeling safer riding your bike in Carbondale versus Denver? What's missing or what's the, what's the thing that makes you feel safe? Uh, in Carbondale, you can go anywhere on your bike and it's a continuous lane. So from leaving my driveway to whatever my destination is, I mean, I can ride Aspen to Glenwood, like 45 miles, completely on a bike lane. Um, and there's um, lanes to cross and it's just much safer, even the roads. Like I was constantly popping tires in Denver and also just general concerns for my bike, even if it's locked, you know, your seat, your chain. <laughs> I would like to see some better parking options. Um, so, yeah. Great. And I think we've covered it, but anything more to say about any investments you'd like to see made? Yeah, I mean, I live in, I would say, one of the most beautiful places in Colorado, and I have been caught in that rush hour. I mean, people commute all the way from Parachute to Aspen, and the traffic is insane. The bus route is great, but they only run every 30 minutes, so increased frequency would be really, really impactful. Absolutely. Thanks. All right, stay around. We'll, we might come back to you with some questions. Um, Melissa, if you're out there, Let's get you in here. There you are. Thank you. Uh, great. All right. You should be spotlighted. So Melissa, if you'll start with your name and where you live and kind of where you go on a, on a daily or weekly basis. Yes, I'm Melissa Colano. I live in Denver in the City Park West neighborhood. Um, my family moved here to be really central so we didn't have to use a car much. Um, I have three young kids, so I'm mostly taking them to and from school in a day, going to local playgrounds and things like that. So why is multimodal important to you? For me, it's, it's really an environmental issue um, as well as a health and well-being issue. We know the impact of single occupancy vehicles on the climate. Um, and we know we need to change people's habits to include more transit, biking, and walking. So I really want non-car options to be easy and accessible and common for everyone, particularly families. So you're somebody who already bikes a lot. So is, is that because, I mean, you obviously love biking. Is there anything that can be done around the transit system that we get you to use transit more? Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't like driving for many reasons. So I, I really bike a lot because that's, that's, I would guess the best option. I, I don't always feel safe biking in Denver, but um, I try to make the best of it and find safe routes. But more bus, my kids are getting older and bigger and I can't bike them around for much longer. Um, having a bus system that was reliable and convenient and you know at a price point that incentivized bus riding um, for families, I think is, is really important. Uh, and anything else you want to say about what sort of investments should be made around multimodal in your community? Um, more buses 
more just reliable buses. I think people can't take the bus with young kids if they don't know that that bus is going to come. Um, it's really hard to get a whole family somewhere um, without reliable bus service. And and until we have that and we're biking and we're walking, like um, to echo what Amanda said earlier, we need slower speeds on our streets, more car free routes. Um, just more bike lanes, ways for children to get to school without having to be driven by their parents. Great. And this is a good moment to highlight that the stories you're hearing now, plus a lot more, are online. We have a document with uh, folks like Melissa. And if you want to see a picture of her with her bicycle and the three uh, the three kiddos on the bike with you, uh, there's a great photo that we've included there. So it's a reminder, and I'll put it in the chat. Uh, one more time uh, that you can find that there. So thank you, Melissa. If you'll hang around, um, let's get Philip in here. Philip, are you there? There we go. Yes, hello. Hold on one second, Philip. Let me feature. Uh, all right, there you go. So if you'll just start uh, uh, your name, where you are, and 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 where you go on a daily or weekly basis. So my name is Philip Chernogorsky. I am a Colorado college student, um, and I live in Colorado Springs. And so I live here, I live a little bit north of the college, so I have to get there and back from my home to school and back every day. And for that, I'm using this quite good bus connection that we have in between the northern part of the town where I live and the downtown where our school is. So it comes every half an hour, it is pretty reliable and I'm pretty thankful. I just wish there's more of these kind of connections around the city, not only between, between north and south. Absolutely. So I guess talk a little bit why this is important to you. Why do you take the bus? Why, why is that the route, uh, the, the choice you make? Yeah, so bus has always played a, like, a very major role in my life. I come from this very small town in Slovakia where if I wanted to go visit my friends or go to school or, or do any errands, I would have to take a bus. And so bus became this place for community building almost. We would set uh, soccer games in the bus. We would talk to our bus driver, tell him finish our homework on the way, talk to our aunties and whatever. Like it was this meeting place. Here, I, I use the bus to get around mostly and bike um, for if there is a nice day and I'm not injured. And however, it's, it is a bit harder because since I don't have a car and not everywhere we have these good connections as between my school and where I live, I have very poor options sometimes. So for example, if I want to go and shop in the nearby Costco, which is around 1.5 miles away from where I live, I have three options. I can either bike on a six lane wide street without a bike lane and really breathe choking fumes and bike by cars that are like very fast, or I can walk there and that takes around half an hour and I can only by as much as I can carry on my own, or I can take a bus, which takes, which is as fast as walking, and and that is also if I make the transit on time. And so none of these options are very reliable, very like conducive for me to leave my house, very comfortable, and don't really allow me to buy a lot at the time. And so I send, end up instead of interacting with the city of Colorado Springs. You know, sitting in my room and ordering online or not really going for the events that are happening around here. So it would be great if there are more of these connections um, across the city. Great. Um, so I guess last question, just what specific investments would you like to see made in our multimodal system that would help you? Yeah, I would, I would really enjoy more bike lanes and more funding to go into multimodal transportation as it is. Like right now, most of the funding um, goes to infrastructure for cars and I think it would be great if some of some more is going to multimodal transportation like buses and bikes and trail and everything that we need just so that we are not dependent on cars and are actually much freer and able to interact with the city that we live in it'll be great great thank you all right stick around uh, let's get let's head over to the western slope uh, Soleil are you out there there you are. Yes, Let's hello. Here. All right, you're featured. So if you would just uh, name and where you live and where you get around to on a daily and weekly basis. Yeah, so I am uh, born and raised in Telluride, Colorado, southwestern Colorado. Um, 
similar to Philip, I'm a college student, so I'm remotely located in Telluride right now. Um, and I, I mean, Telluride itself is pretty much accessible by walking or biking, but we have to do quite a bit of commuting to the big cities surrounding. So I'm, um, have kind of struggled with these, these transportation issues my whole life. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see uh, the expansion, hopefully, of multimodal transportation. Great. Why is multimodal transportation important to you? You talked a little bit about it just then, but why don't you, uh, again, kind of repeat yourself? What, why is multimodal transportation important for you out in Telluride? Yeah, so um, it's really just like the whole idea of having multimodal transportation is thrilling out here, um, not only in the town of Telluride, um, having expanded bike lanes, which we desperately need. We don't have any um, really bike infrastructure, bike lanes, bike racks um, right now. And um, also just to commute to these towns such as Montrose or Denver, which we have to do quite often, um, we don't have any reliable form of, of public transportation to get to these cities. So our average commute around here is, you know, a couple hours, two or three hours pretty regularly. So um, doing that in a, in a car is, of course, terrible for carbon emissions, but um, also would just be excellent to, to have public transportation options. So then go into that a little bit more detail. So what would you like to see if we can make bigger investments in multimodal transportation? What are the things that would help you uh, in your daily and weekly life? Yeah, so within the town of Telluride, I would like to see, like I mentioned, more bike infrastructure, expanded bike lanes, um, bike racks. Right now, the, the town of Telluride itself doesn't really have bike lanes, surprisingly. Um, the Highway 145 that comes into town there is a bike path, but um, there are no bike lanes on the highway. Um, it would be very difficult to bike to any neighboring towns because there's just, there's not a shoulder, there's no room to bike on the side of the road. Um, and like I mentioned, the, there's, there's no public transport to neighboring towns. So you can't ride a bus to Montrose if you wanna grab groceries, which is really. Oh, I think we lost you right there in town is very expensive. So we often have to commute uh, an hour and a half to get groceries in Montrose. And we, again, do that by car. So if we could have a public bus system that went to Montrose, that would be really, really huge for us and a lot of members of the Telluride community. Excellent, great. Thank you. Stick around for some questions. Um, and let's stay on the Western Slope. David from Grand Junction, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Hi, hold on one second. All right, David, if you just start with your name, where you live and where you travel to on a daily, weekly basis. Thanks, uh, Danny. Good afternoon and thanks for hosting this event. My name is David Lehman. Um, my wife and I have lived in Grand Junction since 1992. We're both retired. Um, today's our anniversary. We've been married 37 years uh, and we've been together 50 years on and off. Um, Congratulations. Thanks. So what does multimodal mean to you? Why is multimodal important and what does it mean to you? It means safe biking and walking. Grand Junction by its natural environment and terrain is, is a very bikeable and walkable place. It's pretty level here in the valley floor. We don't have a lot of steep hills. The temperature rarely gets above 100. We don't get a lot of snow, so you can you can get around physically pretty well, but we lack uh, infrastructure in many places uh, to get around safely and conveniently by bike. For me, um, when I was working, I, I would uh, commute three miles uh, each way when I worked. Now I uh, bicycle about 4,000 miles a year uh, to run errands and for fun. And my wife and I also uh, often walk around our neighborhoods in little two-mile loops. Uh, and of course, we drive a car too, but it seems wasteful, inefficient, crazy almost to bring 3,000 pounds of metal with you every time you go on a, on a trip. Um, so what are some of the barriers you see out there in terms of your comfort or your ability to walk or bike or, or even take transit more in the community? Well, for one example is uh, G Road uh, in our neighborhood, it's the most direct route to uh, the grocery store, to other restaurants and coffee shops and stores. 
and uh, we can't really use it because there's no sidewalk and the and the um, margin is too too narrow for us to safely walk through there and and my wife can't walk alternative routes so we can't really walk to a lot of those primary uh, restaurants and shops near us um, basically uh, we lack an interconnected system of multimodal routes where people of any age or ability would feel safe walking or biking there's a lot of gaps in our system and we need to do better great uh, anything else you want to say about what sort of investments uh, we need to make on multimodal? You just said it a little bit, but do you want to um, say anything more to the, uh, what would you like to see built out or see more of? Well, the uh, Grand Junction Urban Trails Committee has a list of about 60 projects that uh, would would make it a lot easier to get around by by bike or by walking. Um, and and they need they need funding for those uh, there's just a lot of places where you can't safely get from point a to point b um, so we, we need extra uh, extra money the community has been uh, in the past has been very supportive but we haven't had a lot of backlash or, or bike lash as they call it uh, to our past projects and the city has made a lot of progress in in striping lanes and we have some protected bike lanes but we do need more separated protected bike lanes to provide safe routes for everybody. Great. All right. Thanks. Stick around. Uh, let's bring in Paolo. Are you out there? And David, if you wouldn't mind, go on mute and take your camera off. And let's see if I can get Paolo. Are you out there? Uh, yeah. Hi. All right. Hold on. Give me a. Uh, I think your camera is not on. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me. Uh... Okay, that's no probably... problem. <laughs> yeah. Hold on one second. All right, if you'll just start, name where you live and how, and where you're getting around to nowadays. Uh, yeah, my name is Paulo Solarzano, and um, I've lived in the Denver area, Denver and Aurora metro areas since uh, 1993, and um, lived and worked there since then. But now I'm traveling from Aurora to Denver. I just moved from to Aurora, and I'm traveling to Denver. Right. So what does multimodal mean to you? Um, how do you use our multimodal system? Why you use our multimodal system? Yeah, multimodal means that I can get to work, to my appointments right now that I need to get to. Um, I started using it because I went through some health issues definitely um, about a decade ago and just starting to piece my life back together. And um, now I, I rely on the bus because, you know, I'm just trying to Get back on my feet. Absolutely. Bus, bus and bike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. Um, what barriers are there right now for you to be able to ride the bus or or ride your bike? But I guess focus on the bus for the moment. What barriers are there for you to to take the bus to where you need to go reliably? Yeah. So I uh, started, you know, trying to piece, you know, get get back into everything. Um, um, probably about five years ago, but in 2017, I really started noticing um, the buses um, um, not showing up um, at, at times, um, quite a bit. And um, it turns out that I, I went to the board member meetings, you know, in 2017, because I was like, wow, I, they're not showing up <laughs> at all. Um, and I, I think back then it should have been declared an emergency. I mean, um, in 2013, there was like 73 hours of lost service. Um, but by 2017, um, it was 5,000, over 5,000 hours of just buses not showing up. Um, so, and I think it got worse a little bit after that. But um, um, yeah, I got to the point where I would either expect like my bus to not show up um, one out of four times. And, um, you know, I was trying to pick up my life. I, I had a, um, I had an ACL surgery. I had a lot of things going on. Um, I, unfortunately, I was in the criminal justice system. As well, so I had probation appointments to show up to, and um, with the buses not showing up, um, you know, I could just remember like the fear I felt, like not having, you know, trying to call my probation officer saying, "I'm sorry, I can't show up. The bus didn't show up," um, and um, you know, showing showing up to work uh, or trying to get off of work and not having the bus show up on its last um, the last route, and um, 
it just doesn't show up. So you have to walk home and you get home at 1 p.m. Um, yeah, it, it, it was it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, well, let's talk about what would you want to see? What sort of investments? What would make the multimodal system better for you? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, you know, like I said, I'd started going to the board meeting, meetings a little bit and I noticed they would say that, you know, this is a national um, kind of issue where um, funding doesn't come in. We had a bus operator shortage and a lot of other places had it too. And um, just funding and, you know, just having um, funding to, for more expanded bus services, um, just more frequent bus services. Um, I don't think we need to go so much into light rail. I mean, they're great. They're awesome. But like having more frequent bus service. So like if I showed up to uh, a stop and it wouldn't be like a half hour, an hour, and especially if it didn't show up, which I know happens, um, happens a lot because it's just, a, it's a, yeah. So um, just having the, the buses show up um, every 10 to 15 minutes would be a huge difference. I could get uh, two places, um, relieve my anxiety and stress of walking out the door. Um, the trans, I don't think would, would suffer the stigma that it's unreliable. Um, and um, it, it would just mean that I would be confident uh, leaving my door, um, that the bus would show up on time, that I could get to work late, that I wouldn't, you know, a lot of other people out there, I, I think about like the other people that are disabled and, and on probation or parole and their lives are changing uh, in, in, in massive ways with, with life altering negative consequences and um, just because they don't show up on time. Right. Well, thank you very much for telling us your story. Hang around. We have one last story to do. Um, and so Matt, if you're out there, let's get you in here and then we'll open it up for questions. Paolo, if you don't mind, turn off your camera and go on mute. Matt, let me. All right, Matt, if you'll start with uh, name, where you live and, and where you travel around to. Hi, Danny. I'm Matt Young. I'm 47. I have a wife and two daughters, 15 and 17. I live in Lakewood and I bike to work every day and haven't driven to work for 11 years uh, to Golden, Colorado. Uh, yeah, so, we're real later to that. Sorry to interrupt. So, wh nope. why do you ride your bike? Why, why, why is this important to you? Why is multimodal important to you? Uh, well, multimodal is important to me. I, well, I love biking. <laughs> But that's I, uh, basically health, environment, and happiness. Uh, not necessarily in that order. The order changes on the day, but almost all days I'm happier on a bike than I am in a car. So what sort of barriers are there? I mean, it sounds like you've been biking for years, but are there still barriers or frustrations or things you run into that would make it hard for you or maybe your family to, to join you? Sure, so I'm, I'm very confident cycling on most roads, not, not all roads. Uh, and, but my, my wife and daughters are not, and I've been trying, and, and they all like cycling. We take the, we try and reduce our carbon footprint as much as we can in everything we do. Uh, transportation is a huge bit of that. And from what I've confined, there's nothing more efficient than a bicycle. But for my daughters, um, well, you know, let me just read some stuff here that I wrote out that I, that I want to touch on. Um, you know, Lakewood has a few bike lanes. Uh, they put one on, on Van Gorn Street, which is approximately, uh, or which is, it was about eight years ago or so they did that. And that's part of my commute. I didn't know how nice that was until they put it in. Um, and that's, that makes up for about one fifth of my commute. The rest of the time I'm sharing a lane with motor vehicles or as, as I call them, metal boxes of death or NBDs. And my family does not like sharing the road with NBDs. Uh, they find this very tense and unnerving. They, they still do this on occasion, but we bike much more if they have routes where they felt less threatened. When they bike, it takes much more planning than it should to find the least dangerous routes, which are often much longer distance than driving routes. So it sounds like uh, what what sort of investments would you like to see made to make it uh, easier or safer for you? Um, a network of bike paths and protected lanes would benefit everyone, not just not just me and not just the people using the, those. Uh, the more people on bikes means a higher quality of life for those folks using them. I know not everyone likes biking, 
but many people do and given more opportunity to do so will enrich their lives. Uh, I know this personally, it's, it's, it, I've seen many lives in, enriched by it, uh, but most people I, I talk to about this are, are scared. They, they're afraid for their lives for, for, for riding on streets. But um, for those who, who don't want to bike, there's, that means less traffic for them on the roads. It means less road maintenance. Um, and for us to go north or south uh, from our house, it's, it's fairly uh, easy for us. But to, or I'm sorry, it's difficult for us to go north south, easier for us to go east west. So just more bike, bike paths, protected bike lanes. Um, and, and we also use the bus too. And my daughters know how to put their bike on the, on the bus and in the, in the light rail. And I use that to go down to Denver. Uh, I'll take my bike. And sometimes I'll bike, I'll meet friends before COVID, I would meet friends and hopefully after. COVID, meet friends in Denver for dinner, and, and some of that would involve me taking, uh, you know, normally you're cycling around, but uh, sometimes I take the bus or the light rail for that. So Great. Well, thank you for joining us. Why don't you stick around um, and let me... So um, thank you for joining us and hearing all those different stories. Again, I think there are a couple of themes we have. We're just scratching the the you know we've just hit the tip of the iceberg when it comes to uh how many people are out there who are making choices or want to make choices to use a multimodal system to ride transit to walk roll or bike around their communities to their work to complete errands um, to live a healthier lifestyle but there are just so many barriers out there and and this state transportation funding bill and the federal dollars that potentially are coming could make such a big impact could remove these barriers there are lots of people who are already making these choices despite the trepidation around the safety concerns or the reliability. Imagine if our streets were safe for everyone, our streets were, our bus systems were reliable, our transit systems were reliable and, and convenient and affordable and accessible. The amount of people we could take off our roads and, and use these multimodal systems, it's really one of the most important things we can do to hit some of the state goals that we have around climate, air pollution, safety, so multimodal is so critical, not only the stories you just heard, but the stories that we have uh, through the um, uh, project that we've been building out. Again, it's in the chat, a link to uh, over 60 additional stories, and we're looking to get even more in the days and weeks ahead as more and more discussions are happening around transportation.